Hello everybody, I hope you are all having a wonderful day today. Um, so this is kind of a, an odd uh, landscape vlog for me because I normally always uh, like to shoot in the best light. Uh, I guess you could kind of call me a light snob. I like to shoot sunset, sunrise, uh, or like really dramatic storms, something like that. Uh, but today it is uh, 4 p.m. in the afternoon and I have plans tonight to where I won't be able to shoot the sunset. So. Uh, I just wanted to get out of the house, get out of the office, clear my head, um, and just kind of relax a little bit. And, and for me to do that, I have to go and, and you know take photos somewhere. Because sometimes when you get in the office and you're staring at a computer screen so long, you just have to you know check out and get out of the house for a while. And I uh, started started getting that itch to explore again. So I'm just going to kind of drive around and take you guys along with me. I have no plan, no clue where I'm going. I have about an hour and a half. Uh, to go somewhere, so I'm trying to stay, you know, somewhat close to home. Uh, but there's some clouds in the sky. Uh, I'll turn the camera around and see if you can see. Not necessarily really good clouds, um, but typically what I what I look for on days like this, where it's really really bright, um, and you know the the sun is at the worst possible spot in the sky. It's it's right overhead. Typically, what I look for is contrast. Um, and lines. So what I mean by that is when you have the, the sun overhead and it's casting all these shadows uh, on everything. I like to look where the, the lighting is really contrasty so that if I need to I can turn it into a really killer black and white but I look for the lines and the shapes that the, that the shadows cast because maybe I could find some kind of really cool uh, you know super symmetrical or even super abstract uh, composition using the really cool shadowy contrasty lines from the sun. So uh, I'm heading to a couple of spots. Uh, there are kind of little fishing holes, uh, just little places on the side of the road by the lake, uh, by my house. And I'm just gonna see what I can find. I brought just one camera and one lens. I just, ha I just threw my, uh, my bag together over there. Um, my Nikon D810 and my 16 to 35. That's my trusty wide angle lens, and then my polarizer, of course. And I'm just gonna see what I can make of it. You know, uh, it, this might be a failed attempt at a good photo, but uh, that's why I took the cam the video camera along because uh, you guys need to see that every time I go out, I don't get a great photo. There's been tons of times uh, that I go out and look and look and look for the best possible, you know, beautiful landscape or whatever it may be, and I come home with nothing. Um, but that's part of the fun for me. You know, I don't care. I, I, I never consider it a failed trip because, uh, you know, more than half the fun for me is just being out. So, um, I'm on my way to those little fishing holes, and when I get there, uh, I guess we'll see what I can find in this terrible lighting. Um, so yeah, I'll turn on the camera if anything interesting happens. Okay, so new plan. Uh, I feel like I've created this trend on all of my photography vlogs where uh, everywhere that I, every time that I plan to go somewhere, uh, it always gets changed to a different location for some kind of uh, complication or who knows what. But of course, I get to this um, this fishing hole that is typically quite nice. I like to hang out there sometimes. It's just it's beautiful in autumn, uh, and I get there and there's just a bunch of you know to be honest, a bunch of punks just sitting there chain smoking like 50 cigarettes and. You know, when I like to get out of the office and go hang out in in the outdoors and do some hiking, I don't I don't want cigarette smoke all over the place, you know, ruining my experience. So I couldn't stay there; it was just too ridiculous. Um, so I have changed plans a little bit. I've gone um, about I don't know, maybe five miles further down the road. I know of another place on the lake <laughs> that will hopefully be uh, much less crowded and more of a serene zen type experience that I'm looking for and uh, I'm gonna try to find something there I still don't know what I'm going to shoot um, there's not a ton of clouds in the sky anymore it's like changing by the minute so I don't know we'll see uh, if I can come up with something either way I'm probably still gonna post this video just so you guys can see what uh, I go through it you know whenever I come back with or without an image um, but I will tell you this so uh, typically when I, I go on these little uh, hiking excursions and, and try to get 
uh, photos. I've never really mentioned this because when I vlog them, uh, I can't do what I'm about to tell you. So typically when I'm by myself and, I, and I'm not vlogging, I always have my headphones in while I'm hiking. Uh, not all the time, but a lot of the time. Uh, and I have, you know, Enya, Howard Shore, a lot of the Lord of the Rings soundtrack playing. And uh, I have this kind of joke amongst people that know me because they know I'm obsessed with uh, Tolkien and the whole Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit um, series. Uh, I have this kind of joke where people say that the Lord of the Rings soundtrack was kind of created uh, for my life because, uh, you know, how movies would just be nothing without a soundtrack. And so um, I feel like that my life is the movie and that that soundtrack was like created for me because every time I go hiking and I have that soundtrack in my head, I just get all of these ideas that start popping into my head that weren't popping into my head before. Like I just start seeing the world so differently. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm not saying, you know, I put these headphones in and Frodo comes out of the trees. I'm not saying it like that, even though that would be awesome. Um, what I mean is that just audio can actually change the way you see things. Um, there's been a lot of studies on the brain where uh, what we see, you know, visuals stem a lot of what comes from what we hear and, and just, you know, memories can spark from that as well. So, um, biggest point I'm trying to make is you should try that sometimes uh, even when you post process you should try that every time I do post processing I just make things very comfortable I want it to feel like as super cozy as possible in my office I you know just I have the lights kind of dimmed I have my um, my cup of coffee or cup of tea I have uh, Pandora radio playing Lord of the Rings or Zen Garden radio or something like that I just make everything super chill. So next time you guys are out hiking try that try hiking and uh, trying to do your uh, Photography hikes and composing your photos or looking for somewhere to shoot while you have headphones in Listening to some kind of music that inspires you because it really might you might see a difference. It's it's kind of fun to see the different um, compositions I choose and the different scenes that I choose when I'm listening to music versus the ones that I'm not. It's just cool to kind of compare them because I find that every time I'm listening to very specific, you know, songs from the Lord of the Rings soundtrack or the Hobbit soundtrack, my photo ends up being this like super angelic, like glowy, ethereal, like fairy tale, uh, you know, this awesome image. And I love that. Uh, your Even your mood can change the way you choose to photograph a scene or post-process a scene so just it's kind of cool I mean it's a cool fact so um, yeah I don't know I just thought I would turn the camera on while I'm uh, driving to this place and I uh, thought I would tell you guys to try that it's it's a, it's a cool trick that I like to that I've done for years I just listen to music while I hike uh, not always because I love the sounds of nature but uh, it can definitely help and it might um, you know give you a cool new look in your photos it, as weird as it sounds it, it uh, having a soundtrack kind of playing to the movie of your life might help you a little bit um, in being more creative it might open up some creative tunnels in your body that, or your brain that you've never used before so uh, yeah I'm almost there. I'm about to pull up here in probably about one or two minutes, and then I'll turn the camera back on, and we'll see what we can find. All right, so I'm here walking at the lake. I think you can see it behind me there. The uh, water is very pretty today. It's a nice blue color, but I just don't know. If I can make anything of this. Uh, there's a lot of wind up here, so I apologize if the audio kind of uh, drops in quality right here. It's definitely a windy day at the lake, but um, nonetheless, I just don't know if I'll be able to make something of what's in front of me, but I'm walking closer to this marina over here, because um, maybe I can make something cool of the marina. Out there, there's just a bunch of nothing, as you can see behind me. It's just kind of a tree line and a lake, but over here in front of me, there's a marina. And maybe I can make something cool of that, I don't know. I guess we'll find out. And I have the drone on my back. So, uh, I don't know if it's going to be a good day to fly that because it's really, really windy outside. But I guess we'll find out. I don't know if I can get something good here or not. Hmm. 
the sun is just in such a peculiar place for this kind of composition to work. Um, well, <laughs> for one of the first times ever on camera, I'm stumped. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I'm going to set up and take a shot here anyway, and I guess we'll see what happens. How tall the Faisal tripod can get by the way. Uh, I'm uh, 6'1 and it was just too tall for me to look into my camera so I lowered it a little bit so it can actually get pretty tall. It's the first time I've ever extended it fully. Um, Alright right now I'm switching my ISO to 64 which is the native on the D810. Uh, shooting in manual mode at f11. Uh, it's got me at 1 40th of a second with the polarizer on. Let me get the polarizer all set here. Get everything in focus. Let's see. Alright, sweet. That polarizer makes all the difference in the world, by the way. If you shoot any kind of reflective surfaces like water um, or even glass when the sun is in the right position, the polarizer just saves you every time. It takes all that glare off and just makes it beautiful. So, um, once again, by the way, I forgot, because I just frantically left the house quickly, I forgot my cable release, so I have to use the self-timer again. So, you know, it's not, it's not a huge deal, but I would have liked to uh, use my cable release here. flying the drone uh, I'm just I'm so pumped up because I just I'm still on like cloud nine with this drone thing I'm so I, did, I love it uh, it was super windy probably not the best idea to fly it over water uh, a lot of water but oh my gosh I just the photos that I can get with that thing are unbelievable and you know I don't care if it's a one inch sensor with 12 megapixels uh, a good photograph is a good photograph and so um, I'm actually gonna be do wow Freaking flying saucer just flew over my head. It was a bird. I don't know if you guys saw that shadow they cast over me. It was freaking huge. Uh, anyway, um, so yeah, I, I got some amazing footage with the drone. Um, I got some great pictures, and I'm gonna be doing something soon because I've never seen a video on it. I'm gonna try printing on my uh, Canon printer at home. I'm gonna try printing various sizes with the pictures that I take from the uh, from the quadcopter because why not, right? Uh, who knows if it'll maybe hold up to 13 by 19 or 16 by 24. Uh, I know it's a one inch sensor, but so is the Sony RX100 series, and those are really good cameras. So, I don't know, that's it's something cool to find out. But I love uh, flying that thing over the water. I got some really good photos. Um, I might have gotten a good photo on the D810. I don't know if I got the right perspective or not. I'm actually gonna go take another one. Uh, now that the lighting has changed. The lighting's changing every second, by the way, because the, the um, the sun keeps going behind these clouds, and since the sun is changing direction, I'm also having to adjust the polarizer accordingly. Um, let's take another one here. I might do a panorama. I might go vertical uh, into vertical format and do a big sweep of panorama. I actually might do that, but I'm going to go a little further that way towards the middle of this, uh, the middle point of the lake. So uh, I know this is just a kind of a short vlog, but. Um, it was super fun just to get out of the house. There's nobody here, which I love it when I'm the only one at a location. It is my favorite because I just get to chill out and enjoy this beautiful, serene uh, landscape. I mean, just look how beautiful the lake is today. just wish I could pull up a chair and sit out here all day long. It really is beautiful. 
Um, I'll give you guys a better view of the lake uh, on some video footage I got, but man, it's just, it really is just so gorgeous out here. The way the light's playing on the trees right now is actually pretty nice uh, at, a, at a few different sections. That's why I think I'm going to try a panorama uh, and see what that gives me because who knows, um, panor the panorama might work out well here. So I'm going to try that and set up a little further down there with the panorama and I'll turn the camera back on if it works out. So the panorama seems to look good. I'm, I'm going to start shooting now. Uh, I have my uh, DA-10 set up in vertical format on my tripod so that it's taking them uh, vertically and then I can crop them down and have a lot of play room. Essentially just kind of sweeping this area here all the way to the marina over there and I'm going to see if I can get something good out of it. So uh, shooting at uh, manual mode, let's see, uh, with a polarizer F13 and a 30th of a second is what it has me locked in at right now. Let me make sure that's still correct. And I'm underexposing by uh, by one third of a stop because I'm not shooting HDR uh, right now. I'm pretty confident that uh, with the polarizer on, kind of bringing the cloud detail back in, uh, that I really shouldn't have to shoot HDR. So uh, with the D810 being 14.9 stops of dynamic range, I'm not too worried about this scene right now. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and get to shooting this panorama. Let's see here. All right. And I make sure, by the way, uh, before I start shooting, I'll make sure, I don't know if you can see this, the back of my screen, it says it's level. You probably can't see it, as a matter of fact. I don't know if you can see that green line where it says it's level. I always make sure that it's level all the way around to the last point I'm shooting, which if you can see, it's green, and then if I turn it, to the middle, it's still level. I turn it all the way to the left, it's still level. So we're gonna have a very, very super easy uh, to stitch panorama going on here. So let me get back into my viewfinder so I can compose. All right, I mean, I don't think I need a self, well, I'll use a self timer, why not? I guess you can never be too safe. All right, that's the first one. Let's go here. It's number two. There's three. I'm shooting this at, uh, I believe, 16 mil. Uh, I think uh, at the widest of this lens. Let's go. Number four. Uh, let's go number five. Six. I'm gonna take a number seven just to be safe. Uh, <laughs> listen to me talking about numbers. I'm gonna take a number one, take a number two, take a number seven. <laughs> you guys ever seen the movie, uh, the movie Home, uh, with those those creatures called the Boove, uh, where that he says uh, humans persons have number ones and number twos, but we have number threes. And we don't want to see number threes. Of course, I'm sitting here on camera talking about taking up to a number seven here, so let me clarify. Photos, seven photos, taking seven photos. Uh, okay, I think we're good. Um, here's a little quick tip. Uh, when I shoot panoramas, uh, a lot of the time, a lot of people wonder where to focus. They, they just say, well, I'm just going to keep my center focus point the entire time so that the focus plane is about the same when you're stitching. That's a good idea. Um, if you have the D4S or the D... 810 like I do, and the Canon 5D Mark III has this as well, by the way. Um, they have a, it's called group autofocus. So it takes four focus points and clusters them together like this. And it actually looks like that in the viewfinder. I wonder if I can even show you in my viewfinder how it looks. I don't even, who knows, maybe I can. Let's try to put you in there. You see there's those four focus points and I can move them around. There's four clusters there. Um, what that's doing is that it's actually focusing uh, just a, a larger area instead of one single point. So it's still single autofocus, but it's single clusters of four. 
Uh, so that's great because then I just get more of a, just a, a little bit larger of a focus plane. You know, I'm shooting f13 on a wide angle lens, so I should be good anyway. But uh, if you have group autofocus on the D810, use it when you can with landscapes because it just generally helps you get more in focus. There's less playroom for uh, blurry or softness, uh, soft areas of the image. So I think that's about it for me. I'm kind of running low on time, so I need to get back home and get ready for tonight. And uh, as always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. If you would like to stay up to date on all of my latest photography videos and adventures, click the big subscribe button below. And if you would like to find out more about me and how to become a great photographer, visit my website at findingmiddleearth.com.